I'm just throwing this video in here for some variety. I believe what I've just built here is the world's simplest solid state test lock well. The circuit will not start pulsing spontaneously even though the supercapacitor is fully charged. All it needs is a little spark. To show how I ended up with this circuit, I'll start with the classic Slayer Exciter test lock well. A battery is connected to a primary coil of only a few turns. This coil is connected to ground via an NPN transistor. The base of the transistor receives its current through a resistor which is connected to the positive side of the battery. A secondary coil with a very high number of turns is connected directly to the base of the transistor. A couple of diodes or an LED is then connected between the base and ground. This is a Slayer circuit with the components laid out roughly similar to what I had in the sketch. It's running on two NICAD batteries, a 10K resistor, the transistor is a 2N222. The primary only has one turn and the secondary only 80 turns, so it's great for someone who's too lazy to turn those really long coils. This is where I started experimenting. I discovered that if I add a 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor in parallel to the battery, it performed way better. With the capacitor in place, it was also possible to remove the LED without affecting the performance. LEDs can still be used to discover the nature of the circuit. An LED placed across the primary coil but facing backwards still lights up due to the voltage spike created when the transistor suddenly stops conducting. An LED placed in series with the secondary coil lights up and indicates that current is flowing from the base of the transistor up into the coil. The output power is now too low to light up the fluorescent tube. When a second LED is placed in parallel but facing the other way, it also lights up. Both LEDs now burn much brighter and the coil has enough power to light up the fluorescent tube. This made me wonder if the reverse pulse coming back from the secondary could be enough to re-trigger the transistor and that the resistor is actually obsolete. And sure enough, the circuit worked just fine after I removed the resistor. Without the resistor, however, the circuit cannot restart spontaneously when power is reapplied. And this is where the fire starter comes in. The mechanism used to produce a spark also generates an electromagnetic pulse. This pulse induces a current in the secondary coil which flows into the base of the transistor. This starts resonant oscillations of roughly 10 MHz in this circuit. The final modification was to replace the battery and ceramic capacitor with a supercapacitor. With the component count down to 3 I decided to build a miniature version of the circuit. The supercapacitor leads are bent into the shape of bicycle handlebars. The transistor leads are curved outwards as if it was trying to give the coil a hug. For this circuit I used a 2N3904 transistor. The collector pin is soldered to the supercaps positive, while the emitter pin is soldered to the negative. The coil is soldered to the base. The resulting loop shape forms the primary coil of the circuit. The coil itself is 85 turns of 0.1 mm wound around an AA battery. This is some time lapse of an original Slayer circuit again. The only difference is that instead of a battery it's now using a supercapacitor, but it has a resistor on the transistor base and it still has the little diode. It requires around 2 volts to put out enough power to get the fluorescent tube glowing. But once it's glowing, it will continue to run down and glow until the voltage is much lower. The voltage has fallen to just above the 0.6 volts that's required on the transistor base for it to continue working. And this is where that reverse pulse coming back from the secondary coil is going to start kicking in. You'll see that the voltage has dropped below 0.6 volts. At this point, the transistor relies on both the voltage and current through the uh, resistor 
as well as the back pulse from the secondary coil to continue running. And there, finally, 470 millivolts and the fluorescent tube extinguishes. But the voltage still drops, the circuit is still oscillating. Just to be sure of that, I did this test a number of times. And if I touch the top of the coil to stop the oscillations, the voltage on the supercapacitor definitely stops dropping. So the fact that it's still dropping means the circuit is still running. If I stopped it below 0.6 volts, then it wouldn't restart automatically. Um, but by using that fire starter and giving it a click, the circuit will immediately commence oscillating again and the voltage will continue dropping. I'm sure many Slayer type Tesla coils are capable of similar low voltage operation. The problem is you probably won't discover it unless you start at some higher voltage and then let it run down using something like a supercapacitor. And it looks like my circuit has finally stopped resonating at 327 millivolts. Thank you all for watching.